All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, talking about the Tour de France Femme Avec Swift, Stage 5. Mel, where do we go? Cinquième étape, Stage 5. On est le château à Albi. On est le château à Albi. So good. This is so good. Wherever Mel goes, I want to go with her. <laughs> <laughs> As has been the case this entire summer, today's show brought to you by Ketone IQ, a course made by HVMN. HVMN launched the world's first drinkable ketone in 2017. Ketone IQ is their latest innovation on ketones with improved effectiveness, taste, and cost. Ketone IQ delivers clean fuel that can cl- cross the blood-brain barrier, supplying your brain and body sustained energy, focus, and sharpness. Also, Ketone IQ is now available at all Sprouts throughout the United States. You can save 30% off your first subscription order of Ketone IQ at hvmn.com slash the move. Again, that's hvmn.com slash the move. Also today brought to you by Allie. Wahoo. <laughs> Wahoo. <laughs> the number one bike computer used in the Pro Peloton, their latest release. Uh, of the Bolt 2 and the Rome 2 include Wahoo's new Summit feature, providing you with colored gradients, detailed climb data, and even helps you detect climbs nearby when you're not using a route. I know, it does a little bing, bing, climb yeah, coming. Yeah, it does. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I'm looking forward to that on Independence Pass. Exactly. Special <laughs> offer for our listeners. You get 20% off all full price products during the tour. Head on over to wahoofitness.com slash the move. Use the code the move. Again, that's wahoofitness.com slash the move. Use the code the move. Well, <clears throat> stage five. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, Mari. I lost. <laughs> well, I it's, totally you, you, you lost. <laughs> Allie and I were pretty clear. And, I, and by the way, I just it just looked like a, a lumpy stage. So I thought, I think something goes. But um, definitely no, I mean, about the farthest thing from a field sprint. But you did win again, yet again. Best dressed on the set. Well, thank God I can win something. But, but yeah, what a stage. Pretty incredible. Ricarda, and I'm going to butcher her last name. She was so sweet and cute and, and, and wrote a hell of a race. Was out there for, what, uh, 40K? Yeah, about 40K. About 40. Ricarda Bauernfein, a young German, youngest youngest stage winner ever in the Tour de France Femme of X-Wift. At 23 years old. 23 years mm-hmm. old. And she has a really interesting backstory. And uh, I know our listen, listeners like the backstory. They do. But this woman uh, started racing at a very young age, and she just didn't think she had what it took to become a world tour rider. Hmm. So she's like, I'm going to go back to university, get my degree, and I don't know. So she races at national levels. Um, she does some Zwift racing. So she trained hmm. primarily on Zwift, which is ironic because Canyon SRAM right. is very heavily sponsored by Zwift um, and their kits look amazing. Well, and the Tour de France Feminine. And it's the title sponsor yeah. right. of the Tour de France Femme of Zwift. So mm-hmm. Ricarda then gets on the, um, she finishes her degree to become a teacher. She ends up on the Canyon SRAM generation development team. Gets her first, is her first year racing world tour. Oh, wow. She wins arguably K- Canyon SRAM's biggest win they've had in since inception. Yes. Yeah. And um, another fun fact is in the, she got third place in the world championships in U23 in the time trial and the road race. But when she raced the German national championships, she was awarded the U23 national champion. But she technically was faster than the elite rider wow. that won. Because the same Pretty course, impressive. same, you know, probably raced same day. So same, conditions the same. And So she's probably been one of our sneakiest up and coming hmm. young riders. And today, I mean, she just looked flawless on that bike. She was railing descent, smooth. Yeah. Yeah. And oh my goodness, I just have never seen somebody just so shocked. And yeah, she definitely wasn't on the radar. <laughs> but it was so good to see, especially how hard Canyon has been trying to be in the moves and has missed it almost every single time. And she even commented on they that. They missed it in today. Her, they missed it and they right. had to chase it down. Um, so even made her attack up that climb even more impressive and then the fact that she dropped her the person who went with her like right away and then just kept going she kept going went full send full commitment um mm-hmm. and, you know she's had some good results this year she she did win um get third place at a stage in the vuelta uh, and she also mm-hmm. finished top five in the vuelta this year and she's usually canyon sram second place rider in races like strada bianchi just against nia doma wow. like so she's been sneaking up there but come on today <laughs> today just changed her life and um we are all forever now enamored by her and because, we saw the wow. um just just the uh, i mean the the peloton was just decimated 
Oh. When, when, once we turned on the TV, I was like, wow, this is even even the main group got down to 30 or 40 girls. But if you look at and I mean, we did hear some complaints or some some questions from the Peloton about why do we need I mean, we talked a lot about this yesterday. And I think you all mm. were really promoting the idea of this fact that yesterday you had a, the longest stage ever for a, a, a women's stage race, 177 kilometers. But you, it, you heard some complaints. But I think if, in looking at today, you combine that with temperatures pushing the mid 90s. It, you, you saw you what it, you, saw you the saw what it did of, to the Peloton. You saw the effects of yesterday's stage today for sure. Right. Because I mean, I was definitely wrong about the idea of the field sprint today. <laughs> but I do think that had this been a one day race or something different, and the weather had been a little different, it, it could have been a, a group sprint. Mm. But because of the fatigue that's come up over days, you saw people really struggling and suffering. And to see someone like Mariana Voss going out so early, yeah. I mean, it just it showed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of sprinting, uh, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, uh, talk about Lorena Weebus, who, who had apparently had some uh, a stomach bug mm -hmm. and, and didn't even or couldn't take the start today. Uh, of course, you know these days get those long hard days. Mm -hmm. It's just easier to get sick too. You get the body gets worn down, um, and and uh, I've been sort of subtly following that. Y'all know this. Been following this 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 green jersey competition. Mm -hmm in one team and i'm like i don't know this feels like the, both of these ladies want it well now uh, unfortunately for lorena way but she's she is uh back home oh man and then i'm, I'm a little upset about this though do we get to talk about the time penalty 100 percent. i mean I, I i think and to take nothing away from ricarda I think this is the biggest story of the day and could end up being the biggest story of the tour of the de france yeah. fam of Zwift. i mean mm -hmm. Uh, I'll, Allie, I, 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 I know you're probably madder than me about this, uh, but I, I, I want to save it. I'll, I'll, I'll come over the top yeah. at some point, but go for it. Uh, this I is mean, I feel like we need to start at her mechanical, first of all, yeah. you know, because they've said time and again how their whole goal in this race is to support Volering. And so to see somebody, to see the leader of the team having a mechanical and nobody on the team dropping mm. back, I mean, that was the first thing that really, you know, jumped out to me and was a little bit shocking. Um, in fact, we didn't even see Majerus come back until she was almost back in the group. Um, but in the meantime, she ended up pacing up behind the car. Um, and in the past, when you've had a mechanical and you go up behind the car, it's not, it's not been a big concern. But now, you know, to see that she actually got a, a 20 second penalty is shocking. I mean, I'd be protesting that for sure tonight. <laughs> find some, well, find <laughs> some Swiss francs on her, but yeah. like 20 seconds, that could be the tour. I don't know. Like, I stand with Damie and I'm really upset that she got that penalty. <laughs> well, and we were, we were, as we were watching the race and of course the race finished, uh, Demi came across the line where she was clearly in that front group. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on the coverage, they showed the, the, the classification and she, and we, we just thought it was, you know, a glitch. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until we went to the tour's website and then you see over to the far right, you know, the 22nd penalty. We're like, and they were, there was some talk of that as she was coming back. And I, and I want to get into a, almost a longer conversation about just the dynamics of what that's like to, to have yeah. a mechanical or flat or a crash or a bathroom break or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and how you typically and traditionally come back up through the cars because it's very traditional mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, but, but uh, it just seems, it, 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 it seems wildly punitive and, 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 and especially in light of, of how, uh, of course, you know, we're well, going to see on Saturday, it could, it could really affect the outcome of the race. I, the thing that I was wondering is when she was coming back and she was behind the car and the, you know, the commissar came up and was, you know, pointing the finger. I was wondering if that was the warning. And then they got behind her, which is also once you're in the caravan, you can get behind the the rider. But, um, but then I saw them in front of her again. And I don't know if maybe they warned her and then gave the penalty after for the second time that she was behind the car after they told her to get off the bumper. But I mean, no matter what, I, I have an issue with, with it, but it just, I wasn't sure exactly the timing of how the penalty came down. Hmm. Did you, did you notice that? No, or, no. And, yeah. and, and as you're watching the coverage, they were, uh, they were even talking about it. Of course they, you know, the, these rules are the, 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 the problem with these rules is they're, they're always in flux and they're always, it, it's just based on the commissar that's there. How do they enforce it? The talk on TV was it, is it a, 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 a monetary penalty, which mm -hmm. is, you know, you're going, okay, whatever. And they even went yeah. on to say on, on the coverage, like, 
what do they do with what do you think they do with the penalties of these monetary penalties what you know they were talking but nobody discussed whether or not it was going to be a 20 second penalty what i will say is it's this is this is ridiculous it's yeah. completely ridiculous because uh, if you're and, and i could even make the argument that it is safer for you to draft behind your own car a director who knows you and they know your style mm-hmm. you know their style of driving because uh, if, if, if you're not allowed to do that, but you are allowed to draft and come up through the cars behind, I don't know, 20 or 30 other cars, what is the difference? Yeah, it's They're, such a vague rule, though. If, if you're going to do that, then pull every car off the road and I'd, say, good luck. Yeah, I mean, I'd also be curious of the consistency of applying this rule because, you know, well, the, in the other stages, it was clear that there were other riders bring, being brought back on after mechanicals and stuff. And if they weren't given time penalties in the same way or were only given a financial penalty, I mean, I think that they would have a good case to, you know, make an argument as to why that should, why protest the protest the penalty. I 100% right. protest, but I mean, for those listening to, and George and Lance talk about it a lot, but it's really common to follow a team car to get back yeah. in the Peloton. Also, it's common to have friends in the Peloton of other team directors that yeah. like I knew exactly what team director would be like, I mean, I got dropped a lot, so <laughs> I made a lot of friends in that, that was, caravan. That's, a, that's the funniest thing you've said all week, by the way. <laughs> that was really funny. Somebody's like, how do you that get all these good. pro contracts? I was like, you spend a lot of time in the caravan. Yeah, People yeah. like you. You yeah. try hard. I've <laughs> noticed one of, one of your arms is a lot longer than the other. That would explain <laughs> it. But I, I knew which team directors right. would, would not, like, dick me around. Like, just because some of them just buzz by you and you're like, oh, I was going to say, there's on. a, there's a, there's a, there's an alternative it's to that too, where there's game. somebody, you know, you're not going to mm-hmm. get any love from. Yeah. And you other, they're like, oh, it's Allie again. <sighs> there, here we go. So anyway, but yeah. I, I would always feel more comfortable following my director. Um, of course, but I just don't like that, that the rules don't apply equally to everybody and a time penalty to me is absolutely bullshit. You know, I think at this point when we start talking about how the sport of cycling doesn't evenly apply the rules, I think mm-hmm. I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> it's a fair point. Fair enough. No, but but but, it, but it, it, in all seriousness, mm-hmm. they have to protest it. Yep. I mean, you, you, there's no there's no harm in it, this. Isn't like some sport where uh, if you pro- protest a foul in, mm-hmm. in some other sport, you lose a timeout. There's no loss. Mm-hmm. Like protest the penalty, make your case that that, that everything we're just making all these yeah. these points we're making, and if you and if you don't if you lose, then you lose. But go, they have to protest. Yeah. Twenty seconds, hundred percent is a lot of time and, and you know, we're, we're talking about two stages now mm-hmm. and you got to animate. I wouldn't want to give well, kind of the blow that it seconds. puts to the team morale too. I yeah. mean, they didn't win the stage today, which, you know, Capecchi was clearly not happy about. And then they get this on top of that. It's like they were on top of cloud nine and now all of a sudden they've got all this stuff against them and they're down a rider. So, you know, I don't think it puts them in the greatest, like, you know, like emotionally happy state. <laughs> also, so. I, I did have to correct that we all were wrong yesterday okay. um, regarding whether or not Damie thought she won. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. She didn't know. So that's why she did that kind of this like half celebration. Like, did I win? Did I not? Because they were catching the break so quickly going into the finish line. Mm-hmm. She didn't know if they'd caught everybody or not. Like over a minute, I'm why is that not in the radio? I don't know. But so she was pretty cute. Her interview, she goes, they go, oh, did you think you won? She goes, well, I thought I'd kind of celebrate just in case I won. And if not, delete the photo. But now please delete the photo. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is 2023, Demi, and nobody deletes photos. Public service announcement to all you girls and gals uh, out there and boys and girls. Um, uh, if you're not sure, do not celebrate because nobody's going to be like, why didn't you celebrate? You just won. PSA. For, for for everybody, just don't put your hands up. But d- d- I bet Kopecki knew. <laughs> I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. I think that she knows what's going on around her all the time, and mm. and that's why you can see kind of some of that frustration coming out after the finish today. Because had Marlon been pulling the group, my guess is they would have gotten a lot closer, and possibly in the sprint, something could have happened I mean, where they the, caught that girl. You know, and. Then, oh, then, no. then that's why I asked before we went live here. I mean, on the who's the, who's directing? I, I don't, I don't, uh, um, 
I don't Andy understand. Sam has a reputation of being an incredible director, probably the best director out there. If you're asking the athletes who, you know, who no would they like to, to not have and to that, send but two it's or three very, girls back. It's very confusing to me too. I don't understand because that's like bike racing 101 is, you know, if your leader is having a problem, you send people back. And if it's the leader of the tour, you're sending everyone back. Yeah. And and I don't know if maybe that made it stand out more that the car was pacing her back on because none of the team thought they needed to come back. That's yeah. so not a good look. I was thinking, I, I, I did read comments again, but talking about SD Works tactics, they did have Rooster once again, just a hell of a teammate. Like yeah. she's just mm -hmm. a train. Still that, that gap in the finish. But um, somebody commented, so that's why I wore the See You in the Douche shirt today because somebody said maybe everyone needs to just see you in the dishwasher and I think the teams oh, did that you, we do tea yes oh. you in the dishwasher because about Chloe Hosking's tweet yesterday we were talking about but the teams did make SD works actually work mm. break stays away and then it's frustration all over so yeah. I think that they played their cards much better on their mom telling them to clean their dishes <clears throat> We'll talk about tomorrow after we do a little business. Today's show brought to you by AG1, our daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every day. Uh, I gave it a try because I was, uh, you know, frankly, uh, I, and it's funny, we had a dinner party. or I did, We didn't have a dinner party. Anna had a bunch of friends over last night. I was, I, I was in bed by 930, but one of her lady friends was like, looked at my plate and she's like, where is the color on? Like, you have no, you have no color on your plate. <laughs> and it's true. But anyways, that's why I have a hack for this. All right. So AG1 is my go-to. Uh, it supports my entire body and covers my nutritional bases every day. I was looking for better gut health, a boost in energy, immune sy system support. And I hated taking a bunch of pills and vitamins. And I wanted a supplement that actually tasted great. And I also wanted to take control of my health. Um, all this for less than three bucks a day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D, which I'm also low in. Maybe that has to do with the color of the vegetables and everything. And 10 free AG1 travel packs. Yes, that's 10 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash the move. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash the move. Check it out. Yeah, and we're still very excited about uh, our new sponsor here on the show, on the move, um, One Skin. So, I mean, it's a good time to talk about it because today the youngest woman to ever win a stage at the Tour de France Femme, of Eggs Whipped, 23 years old, looks flawless, but uh -huh. <laughs> we all spend a lot of time outdoors and in the sun and on our bikes, and you know we're all looking for that best young riders jersey. Um, I come from a biochemistry background, and I love science, and One Skin is founded by a team of four female PhD-level scientists, and they have over 15 years experience studying the biology of skin and aging, and they actually, after testing thousands of peptides, they discovered the OS1 peptide, mm. and now, their flagship product, the OS1 Face, is a clinically validated to improve your skin health, firmness, overall just looks great. And Mari and I have been using it. Lance is like, we've been trying, you know, we'll see if it helps. It's yep. an easy thing to do, Lance. You can just have to use it twice a day. It's one product. Um, and that's kind of the thing that I think is best about it because skincare, um, if you can simplify your routine and it, you'll be more consistent with it and consistency brings results. So I love that about the One Skin product that you only have to use one lotion oh, yeah, and, it, just, and it works. <laughs> and it's perfect. And for a limited time, our listeners can uh, get 15% off with our code FOM or FEM, depending on how you, <laughs> how you say it, F-E-M-M-E-S at oneskin.co. So One Skin, once again, is for everyone that wants to prevent or reverse the signs of aging with groundbreaking approach. It addresses skin health at a molecular level. We're getting sciencey over here. Yep. Targeting the root causes of aging, so skin behaves, feels, and appears younger. It's time for you to experience new skin health routine at a discounted rate today. Get 15% off with that code FOM, or fem or wham bam fe like what <laughs> anyway oh <my> God. <laughs> f e m m e s at oneskin.co love it so yeah um so, another thing we did have to talk about a little bit i heard yesterday the transfer was really long so it was mm. a lot of time in buses riders weren't eating dinners to like 8 or 9 you know some riders get massages before others um and i was telling courtney this the other day that um 
so, so usually you have schedules on how riders get massages and I don't know when you went Lance, usually mm. GC rider goes first, but also GC oh, rider. Yeah. I was lucky. I went whenever I wanted to go. <laughs> yeah. You go when's like convenient for you and you get to eat, but you're looking at all the other riders. You do a long transfer. Um, I always said I wanted my massage last cause I wanted to eat. I was hungry. Right. <laughs> and then often I would just skip my massage because then I wanted to sleep cause I don't want a massage at 10 PM. <laughs> I want to unwind. Yeah. So I, I heard that it was a very long transfer. And so that's also hard when you see riders in the dining hall at 10 PM. And you know, what's crazy. I mean, here's, and I was, I mean, I don't know my, my uh, geography of France very good, but here, here was yesterday's finish where it is. Mm -hmm. And then you have the start that the, they don't look like I see stuff apart. like that. I'm like, that seems pretty close to me. Don't tell me we decided to go find some uh, bulk rate out here an hour and a half or two hours away. That, that's, that stuff pisses me off. Well, they don't have a transfer tonight. It doesn't look like, so at least I'll be able to get some rest. Right. So yeah. right tomorrow they finish mm -hmm. and I'll be again, mm -hmm. or sorry, start and I'll be as they finish today. But, but then they have a good transfer before they climb up the turn. But a lot of times so. when there's a transfer, you actually see it on the map yeah. and you go, Oh, okay. That looks like a long way. Mm -hmm. I, I could, yeah. I will be corrected on the internet. I'm sure. But I believe that the hotel they stayed at was at like for the next stage. So it, it Oh, so they'd have the hotel two was, there probably. Yeah. And, and, and it brings up a good point because what do cyclists like? They, they do like consistency. You, those days and, and nights where you're like, Oh, we're here for three nights. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of us are like, Oh my God, I got to leave in three days. Yeah. Cyclists, you give them three days in a row yeah. in one hotel room. They're like, they get, they get it just set up a little better mm -hmm. and, and it's a little more. It'll uh, be much better for the next nights. <laughs> so that, well, there you go. Yeah. That explains mm -hmm. it. But that also, I don't know. They had a transfer this morning. Right. So. I don't know if that's. I heard the least for the announcers that they were set up at the finish for tomorrow's stage. You know, so I mean, the <laughs> hotels aren't what looks like on the map often. But mm -hmm. it's just and it also to makes about. you wonder if the whole entire organization was in the same spot because maybe some of the teams stayed in the start town, some of the teams might have stayed in the other, and then have a transfer after. So it's not always the same for every single team. Um, so maybe that showed a little bit too. But well, definitely the fatigue of the race combined with the transfers. Makes, makes it hard on recovery. Hmm. Well, I know if I'm in on FDJ, I don't want to stay at Yumbo Vismo's hotel if I'm having a beer. It's I wonder if the French teams Ooh. get better housing. Uh, <laughs> well, don't start that. I, I think, well, let's talk about tomorrow, but I, but, I, but before we do, I, I think, um, I'm curious. I, I do think SD Works has to protest this. Yep. I think it's I, I think it's the biggest story of the day. Absolutely. And, and, I, and, and I hope that, that somebody with a level head says, all right, you know, we... There is uh, inconsistent patterns here and inconsistent uh, applications of the rules sometimes, and it is too important yeah. for the overall. We have to, uh, you're not asking anybody, you're just, you, this is the way. I mean, you want to see it fought out among, yes. you know, with their legs, not with, you know, a time penalty from a, a commissar. Or God forbid yeah. we're sitting here Sunday afternoon talking mm -hmm. about this and Demi Vollering loses the tour by mm -hmm. 18 seconds. I mean, that's not, that isn't the way this is supposed to be decided. It, this is so commonplace yeah. in, in not just uh, uh, women's cycling, but men's cycling and in amateur cycling and in junior cycling. And it, it's... It's it. it oh, okay. I know. No, I I think you actually might be more angry than me. But I was. I am. I, well, I was like running around the office in rage. I get upset with the UCI. Look, anybody that's ever listened to this show knows <laughs> how I feel about the UCI, and um, uh, it's it's not it's not cool. Especially mm -hmm. when when the stakes are this high. This yeah. is the biggest bike race in the world. Th those are not. That's not the way to do it. Let's look at tomorrow. One hundred and twenty-two k, the flattest stage of the tour. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but still four <laughs> categorized <laughs> climbs. Thank you. Yeah. It doesn't look that flat. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's most likely going into a, a sprint finish. Um, pretty straight run and didn't look very technical. Um, and depending on wind, um, some echelons have occurred on this, this course before. Ooh. So that could be fun for SD Works mm -hmm. to stick it to people if you don't have your pure sprinter anymore. Try to make more gaps and get mm -hmm. less competition at the finish line. Mm. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, they will probably try. There'll probably be people trying to get a break up the road again for sure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll see. We shall see. Mm -hmm. uh, some uh, uh, we have uh, two comments and. Um, Wait, so we all saying it's a sprint tomorrow? I'm going with it again. <laughs> Even though I, I don't think today. it's a sprint. You don't think so? I think it's, uh, th I think the, the back to back of the long stage, you saw, how, I mean, there was a lot of fatigue. Today, today. wasn't, nobody recovered mm -hmm. today. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, look, I don't want to, 
We can't all, or we don't all have to agree. I'm, 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 gonna go, I'm going for Sprint. I'm going with a breakaway. All right. I think DSM, it's one of their last chances. And I mean, it is their last <laughs> chance. And you yeah. know, some of the Sprint teams, it's their last opportunity. I would even put Trek in there that, you know, with Balsamo, it would be. Yeah. She got dropped there. early today, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but maybe she's but just resting up. She sat, I mean, <laughs> You don't know how hard they well, did. She's smarter than than we think. Then I thought she was just chilling, waiting for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, all right. So first, uh, this is just a comment. So this uh, these the names on YouTube are just amazing. Uh, at Anxian Ten One, don't you, you know what I meant to say? Uh, uh, and I don't know if that's a, a male or female. So it says, uh, "So glad you got a French spokeswoman to do the opener for the femme." I was hoping you uh, you would, and I do hope Lance is getting a kick out of it as he did for the Tour de France. Yes, I just I, I think it's hilarious. I don't know why I think it's so funny, but it, <laughs> fuck, it's so good. Uh, all right, another one here. This is a question at the end uh, regarding this is a good one regarding the difference in technology and bike aspects between men and women. I heard the argument in favor of lowering the UCI bike weight limit for women. Within certain limits, the current technology would allow to make this change without compromising safety. This change is intended to benefit small and light riders such as Gaia Riellini, who Ali referred to. The current weight limit represents an important uh, percentage of light riders' body weight compared to the heavy riders such as Filippo Ghana in the men's belt. And it would be interesting to hear your thoughts. Well, I think it would, I mean, I think it would be great to have a, a lighter bike for smaller people. I mean, it makes sense, you know, not to have to have the same size bike for or weight bike that it mm. would be for a man or somebody who's heavier. Um, I, I do think that with the UCI, they have so many rules about having, it has to be on the market and it has to, I mean, right. there has to, has they to go through such a, available. yeah, it goes through such a process to get the, it to happen. I don't know when we would see something like that, but. I mean, if they could do it and it was safe, I think mine as well. I mean, it would be the same thing as the exceptions for time trial, you know. Yeah, I would go into, though, I don't think that's necessarily a female issue because there could be a man that's that, that small as well. So it, yeah. it could be maybe it is a weight issue because I have done uphill time trials and, you know, you, your bike as light as possible. And then we strap a like duct tape and Allen key on it to make it like when they weigh your bike in before you TT, mm -hmm. like we've definitely done that. Cause we can get those bikes really light. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I think it would be interesting to address also just the safety. Cause I think the reason this rule happens is because you don't want these super light bikes that then are just exploding underneath riders and not being safe. And so it's on the market, it's a legal bike, but I could see some room for, for some weight limit yeah. changes. Mm -hmm. All right, then last one of the day, we got this just a comment uh, from Aaron T. I want to just let you know, I love your coverage of the Tour de France femme of Egg Zwift. I listen to the podcast on my morning runs and it's the perfect way to start my workout slash day. Your typical show is about 30 minutes, which gets me warmed up and into my run. Damn. How long is How he long running? How long is the run? <laughs> God, I'm tired. Aaron, what's, what are you training for? Uh, but by the end of the show, I'm pumped up and ready to roll throughout the second half. Of, so running for an awesome. hour. There we go. I, I should have kept reading. The second half of my run with an invigorated motivation. Ali and Mari bring such expertise and brutally efficient insight Woo. into the race that frankly <laughs> smothers the main broadcasters of the race. Ooh. Ooh, keep up the great work. <laughs> Ooh, Aaron, you have two nice. big fans yeah, here on thanks, the Aaron. set. <laughs> I'm feeling ready to rock my workout. <laughs> Looking forward to hearing uh, you guys tomorrow morning from Aaron T. Oh, so. thanks, that Aaron. Nice. That's so nice. I think we all need to, I, I, especially Ali and I, I need to go do a little a little meditation or something. I, I, this is not. Oh, no. Yeah. It's, I need what a about little, that rug in your office? I'm gonna it's go, making me mad. Yeah, a little, <laughs> I'm going to do some namaste to get. I, I think they have to reverse this. I do too. So that, that to me, that's a big. Big takeaway for me of the day. Do we need to talk about some merch today? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's I'm, I'm sporting the yeah. see you in the dishwasher. Yeah, head, sure. to, head on over to <laughs> we do, we do team and uh, go, click merch. And then, um, yeah, check it out. we got a bunch of new cool stuff in there. And yeah, if you guys have questions, keep uh, shooting Lance those questions and comments at the move <laughs> yeah, at we do <laughs> dot team. He will respond to every single That's one right. personally. Yeah, as you, as you read every YouTube comment, <laughs> but I, please, like, I read stay this away one that was like, <laughs> said something about my feet being on the table. <laughs> I didn't put my feet I on the table. I, know, like, I noticed. Don't the, I read know, the comments. I, I, I noticed that. Fuck. Are you kidding? I wouldn't read a comment. Fine, I'm to doing it to save my life. New shoes. Oh. New shoes. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>